This video is brought to you by the Patreons. All these people are making sure that Schmeichel is kept busy in my cellar rather than just twiddling his thumbs in the pure darkness. Hello fellow engineers and welcome to Timberborn. Now we're not in Timberborn as today, it's a no cringy singing intro, no beavils. But if you've been following my channel, you know I like defending against tsunamis in city skylines. And in one of those videos, I tried to build a Tesla valve to slow down the flow and much to my disappointment it didn't really work because city skylines water physics they're they're not great but timberborn's water physics could they be better anyway we are going to create a new map and it is going to be a big boy as big as it will go so we'll create that and we'll see what happens oh the the max size is 1024 by 1000 okay that's fine we'll take that okay maybe we won't take that because it's just crashed the game Right, and after lots of fanny around with the Discord, help me out. Cheers, Timberborners Discord. Uh, we finally, we've loaded a custom map. So let's get a tsunami started. I'm not even sure how to do a tsunami this, but um, <laughs> we'll see what happens. So terrain height absolute, let's lower that to the bottom. And then let's just carve the bottom out. Because basically, we want as much height as we can so we can get as much water in here. So we'll just do this in the most efficient way that we can. Then after a little bit more of getting rid of all that stuff, then we have an entire map at the lowest level. So I think I then want to make the brush small. So we'll make it like, I don't know, three wide. And then the brush height will go as high as possible, which is 64. And then along one edge of the map, we'll just do that sort of thing. So now we have a giant wall. And then I'm going to want to put a hole in it because this is where our water is going to come out. So guess like that to start and then to give us a bit of time because basically i'm gonna have to load this up and then build a dam really quickly and then that dam i'm gonna burst to create the tidal wave i mean actually to be honest i don't i don't even need to make dams i could do it all in here i could do it all in here but yeah if i just add a brush height of like halfway up then if i do decide to go in there then at least that gives me time to build the dam because what i'm gonna do i'm gonna come down to this this is the water source and oh man this <laughs> I didn't realize how big the level is. Look how small that water source is. It's tiny. That's what she said. Oh, and I can only build one at once. Okay, let me just get my auto clicker on. All right, auto clicker. We want one millisecond intervals. And then, yeah, that looks good to me. Whoa. <laughs> so many water sources. It's crazy. There's so many water sources. How did it do that? <laughs> There's no subliminal message here. Don't worry. Just, just carry on. Anyway, that noise is glorious. I love I love the the effect of the auto clicker on <laughs> on the sound design of games. All right, so to start off, let's just see can we make a tidal wave? So, foxtails, you're going to be the victims. I I don't know why. I just I don't feel the same love for the foxtails as I do for the iron teeth. So, they're definitely feeling the brunt of this tsunami. We're going to start with 69 beavers. Nice. Start with a load of food and water so they don't die. So rather than calling our settlement something, let's go have a look at Paddy. There he is. Good boy. That's a biscuit. He's eating biscuits. All right, back into the game. So we'll call this settlement. Go check out Paddy's YouTube channel. It's full of like loads of puppy videos and stuff. It's quite, it's quite a good one. And then here are my 69 beavers. Oh, hello guys. Right, I need to press pause because over here, you can see our water sources are spawning water. There is water rising up like an... Oh, no. Oh, I forgot it fall I forgot water falls off the back of the map. <laughs> Fail. Right, hang on one second. And then if we head over this way, we should see... Yes, yes, our water source is filling up. Okay, nice. So whilst that's happening, we need to build a bit of a mega dam. So if we come to the landscaping tab down here, we can build some levees. Now, since we're in creative mode, we can pretty much build whatever we want, wherever we want. So we're just going to build this dam up. Annoyingly, I made this just wide enough that I can't build it all in one go. So... <laughs> We're going to have to do it in like two stages each line, which means it will take ages, but whatever. Anyway, that is now tall enough. You can see the wall is just about the same height as that. So what I'm expecting to happen is, oh, wow, they are they are filling up fast. They are filling up really fast. So basically what we want to see, we want to see the this bit of water go down here. Because these two barriers, remember, that was just so I could, I could have time to build this dam. And then once this all fills up, we're then going to, I guess we're just going to let the dam go and... <laughs> see what happens to these 69 beavers i mean if we zoom out that's quite a scary sight knowing that that is going to be deleted and a wall of water is just going to head towards them 
But look, the water is finally over top. Oh no, I've just realized I need to build a dam at the back. <laughs> Otherwise, the water's just going to come out the back. Actually, I'll tell you what I can do. Map editor the tools. I can literally, I can, I can just block that off. Nice. Okay, we're good. I mean, thinking about it, if I want this to fill up quicker, I probably, I probably should lower this, this wall a little bit. So let's just do that. So that one's being lowered. This one's being lowered. Anyway, it's so the next morning. It looks like, I mean, most of the water's still going off the back of the map. Not ideal. It means this is taking a while to fill up, but you can see it is going up pretty quick. And then to be honest, I feel like that's probably high enough that I can delete this dam. We come to the demolish buildings and resources button. We then do delete objects and then we can literally just select all that, make it red and then boosh, it's gone. Which means we now have a massive wall of water and, <laughs> and our poor little beavers are down here. They don't even know what's about to hit them. So if we were to press play, you can see that is what we call a tidal wave. So we're going to try and measure this as the test. So basically, wall of water is coming straight towards the beaver. It's not actually moving as fast as I thought it would, actually. But yeah, it's properly, it's acting in a big old lump. Look at that. Like it's a proper lump of water. <laughs> it is an actual tidal wave. Decent. Anyway, some of the beavers at the front, they've sort of noticed what's coming. You can see them looking. And if we just turn around to see what they're looking at. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Oh, you poor beavers. I mean, thankfully, the water is going to spread every direction when it gets here. Um, But they might get washed away. I don't really know. Sorry, beavers. Oh, dear. And the building has been flooded. And it's, it's a disaster. It's so dark. It's so dark. <laughs> oh, man. Right. So that is... That is what we're trying to limit. I feel like that might be too much water. Maybe we need to, like, limit how much comes back. Because this is, like... This is non-stop flowing into the back end of it. Anyway, and you can see all the beaver corpses. As it turns to night, they're all they're all just dead under that. Nice. nice. Right. So I've loaded this up again, and I just want to do like a first little test to basically compare this to City Skylines water physics. Now, if you watch that video, you might remember my little... I did a bit of engineering spiel. A sort of a little introduction to fluid dynamics. And basically, that says if we if we have a channel like this and then we narrow it... The water that goes through should go through faster because it's being forced down a smaller gap. So the velocity of the water speeds up. So let's try and let's try and mimic that and see what happens. Now, thankfully, I can just use the map editor tool to do this pretty quickly. So if you want to make water go faster, we're just going to do like that sort of thing. But I want to make this as smooth as possible. So something like that. So as the water comes out, it's only got like a single step width. So yes, it's not the smoothest thing, but it should still be able to test the water physics. So what we're expecting to see is the water fly through there quicker than it did before. So delete the dam, press play, and then let's see if the water, once it starts going through there, will it speed up? So you can see the speed it is traveling as it enters. Is it going any faster? I'm not actually sure if it is. To be honest, sort of look the same to me. So what's happening down here? I think, yeah, it's definitely getting pushed up, which we would expect. And then the water is coming. <laughs> well, that's, I think that's even more terrifying. I've just made the tsunami twice as tall. Sorry, beavers. They're being washed away again. <laughs> <laughs> right, but with this one, doing a Tesla valve, I feel like this is actually going to work because the Tesla valve is sort of, it's meant to work under like constant water. It's not meant to, it's not really meant to take like a single flow, like a tidal wave. So what we just did, we'll spin it around and we know in City Skylines that this did actually sort of slow the flow down. So if it does in this game, then I think we're good with a Tesla valve. So I built this with the diagonals the other way around. And the theory here is as the water comes down here, it should get like pushed back in those two corners. And the water that makes it through, uh, because it spreads out, it should lose most of its energy. So it should slow down. And then as we learned in the City Skylines video, you'd expect it gets so slow that sort of as it comes around here, as it's spreading out, sometimes the water can go backwards. And that principle of the water spinning around is the key to the Tesla valve. So if we, if we do see the water slow down, then we should be good. Right, let's play this. Wait, let's delete the dam first. That's probably a good idea, Matt. Sometimes my genius. It generates gravity. So we're expecting to see here a third of the wave going through there, two thirds being pushed back either side. Oh, yes, you can see. Look at that. The water physics are going to have some fun here. Look, I really want to see. Oh, look at the splash. 
Look at that. That is awesome. And yeah, as the water comes through this valve, it's spreading out. Ideally, it should be slowing down. I honestly thought it would in this game. Although maybe we've just gone a bit too big. Look at that. <laughs> that wall of water. So yeah, I guess the question is, is this any better than the last version? It seems like it's moving about the same speed, if I'm honest. Uh, what, what do you guys feel about it? You like that there's grass beneath your feet, but you're worried you're about to be... Swum. Yeah, thought so. Thought so. Sorry about that. <laughs> right, so those two tests, I'd say a bit of a disaster in a word. Water physics perhaps aren't as realistic as I thought in this game. However, a Tesla valve, it might work. We haven't really seen how this game deflects waves yet, apart from when we're in these two back corners. So let's reload our save. And this time, let's actually build a Tesla valve. So, I think the easiest way to do this is to build everything at the right height first. So if we just fill all of that in. And then we've basically got a block of land that we can carve our Tesla valve out of. So brush height back down to zero and we'll make the brush a bit smaller. Alright, so first off, let's do, let's do a sort of simpler test. So let's just put the straight parts of the Tesla valve in. So basically we want like a diagonal over to there and then this is where we loop around and then we basically do the same from there so we go diagonal down this way and then we loop around so then we end up with something like this and the theory here is when we let the water through here and then the main flow should come around here and sort of whip around this side and then as it comes out this way it's going to like force the water back it's making it really turbulent so any water that comes down here should be pushed back. Now, we haven't actually tested in this game whether curves do deflect the wave. So we'll have to see what happens. But essentially, it repeats that a few times. And if you have enough of these, it should stop water coming out this end. So I guess we delete the dam. Boosh, it's gone. Then we hit play and then we watch what happens as the water comes through. Now, hopefully the water isn't going to go on top. No, it shouldn't do. It should be fine. So you can see all the water is heading down this channel. It's going along this way. This will be the test. What happens? Does the majority go forward or is it just going to go every direction? There's definitely going to be some spill down there. That's fine. But then as it comes around here, is it going to spin around? I mean, it sort of is it's quite hard to actually see what direction the water is going because it's it's so dark oh man it's filling up really quick it's filling up really quick <laughs> and then down here unfortunately the water has gone that direction first rather than around here um, and it's made it it's made it to the outside uh, uh so sorry beavers i think oh god there's so much water coming <laughs> no beavers <laughs> oh actually actually that's way better. Their heads are above water. Some of their heads are above water. Their heads were above water. There's, oh man, there's a lot of water coming through. <laughs> hmm, not sure if the Tesla valve is actually working at all, if I'm honest. But then again, the volume of water is so, so much. It might be worth trying to do this again, but with a lot less water. So loaded up the same thing. I think I am, I'm literally gonna, this is a bit sacrilege after how long I spent, but I am literally just gonna cut all the walls down. We want a short burst of water, not what we currently have. So let's get rid of all these walls. So it will give the game a second to flush all that water out the back of the map. There it goes. And now we have a much, much smaller amount of water. And hopefully, because it's a little bit lighter, we might actually be able to see the flows and things. So goodbye, dam. And then let's just send the water through. I mean, I probably should make this way smaller so we can actually see what's going on. But hey, ho, it's at that height. Right. Is this going to be any different in terms of reacting? I mean, at least we can see like what way the water's flowing now because it's got like it's got some texture to it. It's not just a black abyss of darkness and doom. So the key thing I want to know as it comes around here, what happens to the water here? You can see at the moment it's sort of it's going in both directions, but we want it to get overpowered. Oh, I think it is. I think it is. Yeah, so that you can see the water is coming around there. And then as it's at this point, can you see it's all swirling out that way and then heading down there? Oh, that's actually working. Yeah, so if we come down and look up there, you can see all the water is coming out this direction. It's clearly around the edge going around that side but the beavers still get wet 
All right, so I've loaded this up again. Now, uh, another test I want to do. I, if I block off that, so all the water goes down that way first, that would be a good test to see what happens as the water comes around. Does it rush up here or does it go that direction? Because that's like the direction it was going when it was released. So if I just put a low wall in like that and then perhaps do the same down here. And this time, as the water comes down, we should see it go past that. Yep, that's good. And then it comes round. Oh, look, it does rush back up. It rushes both directions. Okay, so that's pretty good. You can clearly see there it's going, it's spinning around and coming out both directions. So at least in this, compared to city skylines, the water does actually follow like curves and things. It doesn't just work in a single direction. So I think in City Skylines, it probably would have bounced off these and like acted like a wave of light, basically. But yeah, unfortunately, it seems a Tesla valve cannot be modeled in this game. I feel like as many as those as I did, like as long as I made this, the water would still come through because it doesn't seem to like get sped up or slowed down at all. But another test, which I think could be cool, it's going to be it's going to be like my own take on a Tesla valve, but sort of. A valve made just for video game water physics, I guess. So first off, since the water's down at that level, let's make all of this the same level, just so it's a bit easier to see. So we've got the canvas, and that is the channel we're going to put our water through. So if we just do a test of that quickly, you can see clearly the water just goes straight through. And let's have a little look sort of at the speed, at the height. So in normal motion, it's going that sort of speed, which I think is just the speed of water generally. But yeah, that comes down, washes the beavers away, sorted. We've seen that before. Okay, now let's, rather than a Tesla valve, let's make something I'm coming up with called the map valve. So basically, I want to use the power of water to try and push that water back. So if we down here somewhere do that sort of thing, then I'm going to do like a stepped up thing. So I need a bit of space. So I'm just going to make this a bit bigger back here. So we start at height one. We do height two and three. And then we got two steps up. Now I'm just going to build like a reservoir thing up there. Fill it with water spawners. Build a dam at the front of it. Press play as we watch these two things fill up with water. And then I think we're ready to delete that dam. So we'll delete that and we'll start that water on its way. Now, what we need, we need like a beaver up here that's going to be a lookout. So imagine someone up here. They're like, hey guys, there's a there's a blooming tidal wave coming. Tidal wave. So that triggers the two people that are up at these dams to uh, let the water go. So I'm guessing now would be a good time to do that. So let's hit pause. This beaver sent the signal to the two beavers that are up here and control these dams. They've said, we need to delete all of that. Release the dam water. So the water comes out, it shoots down here. And the theory is when it combines with the other water, it should fling it back up towards where it came, thus saving the beavers down here. So it's coming down. Oh no, oh no, it's all right. <laughs> oh dear. Well, we may have flooded our beavers a little bit, but still, that's only a small bit of water. They might get wet feet, but now you can see the, there's like a battle going on. The water that I've sent down, hopefully it's going faster because it came down these waterfalls. So you can see it's completely still in the middle. They're proper battling the two sides. Oh, and I think there's just more water. Oh no, it's all going that way now. It's all going that way now. And you can see there's a giant wave coming towards my beavers. So technically, I've just made it worse. Yep, they're, they're all drowning now. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Right, and on that note, I think I think I'm I'm willing to admit Nikola Tesla probably a more clever man than I am. The the map valve does not quite have the same effect as a Tesla valve, <laughs> despite my best intentions. Right, and on that note, guys, I'll say peace, love, and beaver corpses. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you very much to the patrons for supporting the channel. Massively appreciate it as always. I'll catch you guys next time. Bye.